So today we will be discussing vectors. So let us start. So why should we know vectors? So vectors are quantities which has both magnitude and direction. Now everybody in life wants a direction and magnitude to move in that direction, right? So basically internally we are all trying to be vectors. Most of the people around us are scalars. That is we all have the magnitude to achieve something, but we're generally not very sure about the direction, right? So that is why vectors is important. If you know the math, you know how exactly you should be, you know, working your internal structure such that you have the direction and magnitude in your lives as well. But that said apart, vectors are very important in physics and maths in general. And it's a very big subject in itself. If I was supposed to speak about vectors, it would include quantums and infinite dimensional spaces and all the calculations connected to that. But I don't think this is the right point of time to impart that much of information because this will, this will really confuse everyone. So I'll be discussing vectors in bits and pieces throughout the lecture series. So you need to stick around to understand vectors in detail. I mean, in no way in one video I can cover vectors in totality. So it'll all be bits and pieces and somebody has to be smart enough to fit in the puzzles together to make sense of what is happening. So let's start. So then, so vectors, uh, we'll be looking vectors from two perspectives. They're both similar in nature, like vectors are quantities which have which has magnitude and direction nothing changes on that front but then when you are using it in machine learning techniques and AI techniques it has a slightly different representation but when you talk when you're discussing them in physics and in maths and when you're doing a calculus on those quantities then it is described slightly differently but they are one and the same thing a vector needs to have a magnitude and a direction just to be clear once again so, so what are vectors? I've said that many times. A quantity which has magnitude and direction. Now we can represent them in two ways. One is vector is a point in space. So in AI, typically in machine learning algorithms, a list view or a list or a stack of piled numbers is actually considered a vector. So this is pretty much a vector. If you were to use um, ML techniques or AI techniques, why? Because this is a list view of numbers and this number represents some magnitude in some dimensional plane. So what does it say? Vector is a point in space and the list of numbers helps in identifying that point in space. So, so, th so, th so this list right here that I have, let's say for instance, say 2, 3, 4, 6. So I can identify this vector in some um, some dimensional space with these list of numbers, right? So I have the magnitude and I also have the direction because of these list of numbers. How so? So this is x, y, z, p4 dimensional space and the magnitude is given by 2, 3, 4 and 6. So I'm able to represent this vector A using this list representation, which is very common in machine learning techniques and AI techniques, all right? And there's another refined version to say what we've all studied in physics which say is that a vector is something which has a magnitude and direction right so for instance if i was to talk velocity the plane has a velocity of 250 miles per hour east by southwest so i'm giving the magnitude and then i'm also talking about the direction in which direction the plane's moving right so both of them are important for me to make sure where exactly the plane is flying right so this is another way of representing vectors so in this way a vector can be represented with a directed line segment the length of the line segment is a magnitude of the vector and an arrow indicates the direction so like sort of this so this is my vector this is its direction and this length let's say if this is five centimeters so then five is the magnitude of the vector okay so this is how it is represented in this case even in this case you can actually represent the vector as a line in multiple dimensional spaces and then reorient yourselves to figure out the position of the vector by doing the cosines and sine. That's again a very technical thing and we will be discussing them in bits and pieces as and when we proceed with different mathematical 
concepts and topics all right so i hope this makes sense until here then how do we represent a vector uh, vector representation is majorly done in two ways either you can have um yeah an arrowhead on top of the symbol or you can have a bold representation either ways is fine whatever works for everybody so then what is the magnitude of vector magnitude of vector is given by this relation it is actually the value what a vector holds so if i have x and y plane two dimensional plane and i have this vector and the magnitude or let's say the length of this vector is 5 so this is 5 this total is 5 and so that is the magnitude and to calculate the magnitude i can actually use this relation which is x square plus of y square so let us say i have a vector given by a this is on x axis and this is on y axis so on x axis i have a vector which is on 4 and on y axis i have it on 3 so here so how am i supposed to be calculating its value so it's pretty much pythagoras theorem this is 4 and this is 3 so i could do a square root 4 square plus 3 square which will give me the value as 5 and so the magnitude of this vector is 5 right um, one thing important to note here is i've taken strict values like real integer values positive real integer values on the x and y axis and then i've applied a pythagoras theorem or x squared plus y squared under root value to find the magnitude of the vectors but you can spam this information which you will see later on when we are checking on quantum physics and mathematical models that you can resubmerge the statistical computation of these vectors and then put a cosine and sine values and then find out the exact uh, exact magnitude of the vectors in different dimensions okay so this vector might be on z axis what i'm trying to say and then it has its effects on multiple other dimensions right and so we are trying to calculate how much of the vector has a value on x axis y axis z axis p axis if you have multiple dimensions and that that again gets a little tricky as a concept okay but that is still doable so this is uh, this is how you calculate a magnitude of vector in two dimensional plane which is pretty straightforward so yeah then comes yeah we discussed magnitude of vector already then comes what is a unit vector sometimes um, it is necessary to represent vector with its direction and to and to do that and to make that happen we use unit vectors a unit vector is a vector with magnitude as one it is denoted by a small carrot or hat above the symbol so this is the symbol this is the hat and this is a unit vector and you can actually take the vector and divide it by its magnitude to get the unit vector unit vector gives you the direction so we've seen if a vector is on the x-axis we denote it as x cap if it's on the y-axis we denote it as an y cap and if it's on the z-axis we denote it as a z cap and then its magnitude is one so that's how you are able to figure out on which direction the vector spans on which dimension so that so unit vector is handy in that case now uh, that is pretty much it that was pretty sweet short and sweet i haven't discussed anything complex i hope um, this gives just an overview of what exactly a vector is and gives you an overall picture why should we be studying vectors in the first place but again vector is very complex we will we will be discussing them in bits and pieces because many mathematical models which includes quantum which includes calculus submissive structures need vectors and their understanding to the fullest not just with its definition that it is a quantity which has you know direction and magnitude but it has got a lot of depth to it in itself which we will which i'm really excited to discuss down the line so yeah that's pretty much it you can get in touch to me through the website and Thank you so much.